students and welcome to Natural Sciences and Technology for the Classroom 2 with the module code NST, NST1502. My name is Dr. Patricia Porto from the Department of Science and Technology Education and I will be your lecturer for this module. Those are the things that I'll be discussing in this welcome video. Firstly, it's the learning outcomes for the module, which are very important. Assessments, assignments due dates, module sites, and student mistakes. Okay. So there are two more, there are two learning outcomes for those modules. The first one is to apply an inquiry-based approach to basic and advanced science process skills as required in the intermediate and senior phase of the school classroom, with specific focus on the natural science knowledge strand, namely live and living, as well as planet Earth and beyond. So in summary, we'll be focusing on two knowledge strands in this module, which is live and living and planet Earth and beyond. The second learning outcome is to plan a range of effective science activities applicable to the intermediate and senior phases of school, with specific focus on the natural science knowledge trends, life and living and planet Earth and beyond. So after understanding the two strengths, as I've said, the second one in summary is to have to plan effective science activities. And I've also added there that they, this module has a relationship with another module, with the module called NST1501. So don't be surprised when you see NST1501. It has a relationship with NST1502. And one of the common things is their first unit. So unit one of NST1501 and unit two of NST1502, they are similar. However, the way the assessment are structured and the way they are asked, they are not the same. Okay, let's talk about assessments of this module. This module has three assignments. The first assignment is MCQ. What do we mean by MCQ? It's multiple choice questions. And you will find this assignment one online. The second assignment, which is assignment two, and the third one is assignment three. Both of these assignments are written assignments. So meaning that you won't write them online like an MCQ, but you may either type them from your laptop or desktop, or you can write them by hand because they are written assignments. So the last assessment for this module is exam, and the exam, it is a portfolio. So unlike a take-home exam where you will be sitting at home and writing on a specific date and specific time with given hours, for this module, you'll be writing a portfolio, meaning that you can start with a portfolio as in today. You can start writing that portfolio. When it comes to due date, it means you'll be done. Or as you get assessments, feedback, you can now fix um, some of the mistakes that you made to ensure that you write your portfolio and, and pass it well. Uh, location of this assessment, someone may ask, where do I find this assessment? This assessment are located in a tutorial letter. 101, in exception of assignment one. As I said, assignment one is an MCQ, so you're going to find it online. However, assignment two and three, including your portfolio, they are available in your tutorial letter 101. Assignments due dates. I know this is one thing that students get very, very excited when you talk about it, which are assignments. So in this slide, I'll just be talking about due dates. Uh, your assignment one is due on the 9th of May. And after assignment one, I give you a bit of time to write your assignment two and also think that you also use this time to also start your assignment three because your assignment two is due on the 10th of July. And then after that, one month later, your assignment three is due on August. After that, one month later, your portfolio is due in September. However, as I said, your portfolio, you can start it now, you know, you can start writing it now because it is there, it is available in your assignment, um, in your tutorial letter 101. However, I will explain in due course on how to write the portfolio and everything that pertains to it. However, you can start now. 
So it was intentional for me to add uh, this assignment due dates because I know most of the students, they really, really struggle when it comes to assignment due date, they submit very late. So please note this assignment due, due date down and ensure that you adhere to them. Module site, and you see that I've even written very important. It is very important to visit your module site and you can find it on my UNISA. I've even screenshot a screen there that shows you how does a module site looks like. But I feel, I think actually I know that majority of you are familiar with the module site. So this is how it looks like. Ensure that you visit your module site very, very often because that is where you're going to find all the information that you need in this particular module. So some of the things that are very important in the module site are your announcements. Remember, your module site is, is your classroom. So in order for you to know what is happening in this module, is to go on the announcements. So if there are any changes of the due date, there are any extensions, but don't focus on the extension, please focus already on the given date. But if there's any particular thing that I want you to know in the module, I'll always write it in the announcements. So please don't hear by another student that, oh, a lecturer portal wants this, uh, Dr. Portal wants that. No, go to the announcement and ensure that you read for yourself on the things that I want. So module side is your classroom and the announcement should be checked often. Secondly, is your discussion forum. I normally open discussion forum where we want us to discuss a particular concept or a particular topic that we'll be doing in this module. So please ensure that you participate in the discussion forum. Currently, as we speak, there's already a discussion forum on intro introducing yourself. And I did notice that the majority of the students have already started introducing themselves, which I, it was really nice for me to get to know you and also to know what are your expectations of me as you start this um, module. So it was very, very interesting to read some of the comments that the student have made. If you haven't introduced yourself, please go and introduce yourself and know that I do check all these uh, forums as much as I may not reply to all of them, but I will, I will check them. Another one is official study material. This one is important as well. You will see that in the previous slide, I did say that your assessment are found in your tutorial letter 101. So someone may ask, where do I find the tutorial letter 101? You can find it under official study materials. That's where you find the tutorial letter 101. Another important thing in your module site is the additional resources. So I, 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 you know, as the time goes on, I always like to add additional resources, which I know that they will assist you in the module. Sometimes in the additional resources, I will like post newsletters. If maybe I've noticed that majority of the students are asking me a particular thing and I see that as an, as an issue, I'll just write a, new, a newsletter and then I will post it in the additional resources. So please check as often as you can. And one thing that I'll also explain uh, in, in the coming weeks, is your uh, e-tutor site. This is a main site for the module, but you will also be allocated a tutor site where you will have a tutor who will be explaining things. Ensure that you also visit that site. It is very important. Student mistakes, avoid them. With this one, this is a way of me introducing you in the module. And as I do that, I am saying to you, Please avoid these things that I've, I've written here. These are the mistakes that have made many students to fail the module. You'll find that you understand the content, you are doing well, you, you pass very well, but because of those mistakes, you fail the module. Please stop whatever that you are doing and listen to me as I explain these mistakes. The first one is late submissions. Students like submitting late with the hope that, oh, the assignment might be extended. Don't do that. Submit on time. You already are registered. Start writing your assignments today. Avoid late submission because in this module, I do not tolerate late submissions at all. I do not even entertain them. So if you are used to submitting late and thinking that you will still be doing the same in this module, you are going to find yourself 
failing the module. Second mistake that students have made in the past is submitting wrong files, submitting wrong assignment, submitting a Word document instead of a PDF document. Obviously, if you submit late, you're going to end up just submitting a file really, really fast and end up being submitting a wrong file because you did it on the last minute. So stop submitting wrong files because you're going to get a zero, meaning you're going to fail the module. Another thing is submitting a Word document instead of a PDF. This has been stressed out so many times and you are away. A file that is accepted is a PDF file. So please stop submitting Word files, otherwise you are going to fail. Third thing, it's not visiting the module site. Often I have stressed out the importance of visiting the module site because that is your classroom. That is where you find the information. So if you don't visit it often, you are going to fail because you are going to lose on important information that I have shared on your classroom site. Fourth thing, it's not reading an announcement. Sometimes you find that student will send me an email and ask that, oh, Dr. Porto, I've heard other students saying this, but I mean, I don't understand that. You find whatever that they're asking is already on the announcements. So it's very important to read your announcement, read them, so that if you don't understand something from the announcement, you come to me now and say, I've read your announcement, but I don't understand one, two, three. Please explain it to me and I will clearly do so. Another one is not participating in the discussion forums. As I said, I do post the discussion forums and I will tell you what you should be discussing or a topic that I want us to, to talk about. So if you don't participate, you will fail because you find that other students, they ask certain things and you have a problem for that thing. But because of you you're not participating, you are not reading other students' comments, then you'll end up failing. Another one is submitting assignment one without answers, and I've written this in capital letters. I said very important to note. With assignment one, I have explained that it is an MCQ announcement as assessment, meaning that you write it online. When you are done writing it, you are going to get results immediately. You are going to get your marks. So you find that other students they submit, they don't get marks or they get zero, and they just chill. And only later in the year, they come and say, oh, Dr. Porto, but I did write this assignment, but now the system says zero. It's because you find that you submitted your assignment one without answers and you're not away. So make sure that after you have written your first assignment, you do get marks. If not, you go back to it and check, maybe you have, you have not inserted the, the answers, then you insert them because you are given three chances to write that assignment. So if you make a mistake or you fail it, you can do it again, but only three times. So please, that is very, very important to note. Submitting corrupted assignments. I found in the past that students submit wrong, corrupted assignments, not only wrong, but corrupted assignments. And how do they do that? For example, some students don't have laptops, so they'll write their assignments, put it in a USB, and go submit it in an internet cafe. You know, in that internet cafe, there, there have been so many people who were there and they corrupt your assignment and you submit it. When it comes on my site, it, it is corrupted. So ensure that you avoid that. And if you don't have a laptop, I'll give you a tip that when you have written the assignment, send it to yourself, email it to yourself. Then when you go to the internet cafe, you know that you can just simply go to the emails in the internet cafe and then send it. In that way, it don't corrupt it. If you have your own laptop and you know that so many people use it and they put their USBs and your antivirus is not corrupted, it end up corrupting the files. So this may sound like a tedious thing, but that's what happens on our side. And students end up failing because we won't make corrupted assignments. Another one is submitting incomplete portfolios. I've written this in capital letters as well, saying many students fail because of this. There are so many students that have passed the assignment one, two, and three last year, did very well. But when coming to your portfolio, they did bad. Why? Because they submitted incomplete portfolios. I'm going to do another video and explain a portfolio in detail. I've also um, opened discussion forums where I'm also discussing there. 
So you fail just because you don't listen to the video, just because you don't participate in a discussion forum, and then you end up submitting incomplete portfolios. Another one is plagiarism. This one is the big one, as I ended with it. Student plagiarize and they think that we won't know. Maybe this is something that we have been doing for from the past, either by buying papers or writing with your friend and then submitting the same thing and just changing the names, thinking that we won't know. We will know. If somehow you have been get, getting away with this, just know that in this module, I will catch you. And when I will do that, I'll give you a zero and send your script for um, uh, integrity committee and they are going to expel you. So that's just some of the things that I've seen in this module. I have emphasized plagiarism and students still plagiarize and they end up being expelled. Please avoid this, it is not worth it. Give yourself time, write your own work. If you don't understand, this is why I'm here to assist you. And at the same time, if you plagiarize, you should also ask yourself, what kind of a teacher are you going to be? What will you be teaching your students if you are plagiarism? You are plagiarizing. Please don't do it, otherwise it will cost you and it's not worth it. So this is some of the few mistakes that I've seen. They are more obviously, but we will talk about them as the year goes. But these ones, note them down and don't do them. So NST students, you are welcome to the module and thank you so much for listening to this video up to this far. Good luck uh, in this module. And I know that you will do well as long as you put your mind and your heart into it. Goodbye.